Good evening. Uh, tonight's uh, message is entitled, Not Easy, But Eternally Useful. Not Easy, But Eternally Useful. You know, Jesus, when he taught, would often say, Those who have ears to hear, hear. And I believe as Christians, followers and learners of Christ, we are called to listen deeply, to meditate on Christ's teachings, and to listen deeply from the heart. I believe at the heart of Christianity is Christ and his teachings. This is what he taught his disciples and what he called the people to, himself and his teachings. Now, Jesus could see that the people were weary and burdened with so-called religion. And so he offered a personal invitation to himself, and with that, to know his Father. The people were weary and burdened with religion. What they needed was revelation. Revelation. Revelation means unveiling. The Greek word that we translate revelation uh, is from the word apocalypto. This is also where we get the word apocalypse. When most people hear that word, they think of the end times and end time prophecy. And this is unfortunate. Revelation has much more to do with us than just that. Revelation is like a curtain that is pulled back. An uncovering, a, a revealing, a bringing to light what may have been previously hidden and veiled or obstructed is now made known, manifested, and disclosed what before might have been unknown or was unknown. You know, it's God who does the revealing. Jesus, on one occasion in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. You know, I love that saying that says it's easier to pour into an empty cup than one that is already full. Another saying is similar, that it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. You know, there's many who close themselves off to God and his teachings because they think they have already arrived. They have heard all the stories. They have read all the books. They've sat in conferences and seminars. They've heard teachers and preachers and professors and expositors. And so they have this vast knowledge about God, or so they think, but yet have not found him. He remains hidden from their sight. For you see, they have no personal connection to him. He is but a stranger to them. Now, I've seen and have personally experienced this intellectual pride that blocks the sunlight of the Spirit. Some have even uh, put and placed God in a box when they have crafted themselves by all their so-called wisdom and knowledge. And so they end up restricting the God Almighty. They, they put him in a box restricting God Almighty. Now I've found that is by letting go of that construction, that box, and coming to a place of simplicity in the mysterious that revelation can begin. And isn't that the place of a child with a sense of wonder and awe, the simple and the mysterious to those who are open to learning versus being closed-minded? Those who are open will receive the revelation from God. Jesus goes on to say there in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verse number 27. All things have been committed to me by my Father, he says. No one knows the Son except 
the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And so we see here in this passage that revelation consists of a personal, intimate knowledge of the Father given by the Son. It's given by Christ. Christ chooses to reveal the Father to us in his teachings and in himself. And so if you want to know the Father, which is revelation, go to the Son. Again, no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. And also from the Gospel of John, we read, No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is Himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made Him known. And so Christ calls out to us. Hear Christ calling. He calls us to himself and reveals the Father. In Matthew chapter 11, he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Christ here is talking with those weary and burdened individuals with the law. They're weary and burdened by the law with its rules and resurrection restrictions. They're trying to reach impossible standards of perfection. These, these yokes are placed on them, this heaviness of the law, with trying to reach impossible standards of perfection, of strict legalistic guidelines, of insurmountable grid lines and ever encroaching deadlines. And so Christ calls out he called out to those individual individuals and he calls out to us today. Those who hear Christ's calling will be given revelation and rest. They will be rescued from a religion of self-righteousness. Jesus promises rest for those who were heavy laboring and are heavy laboring. Rest is offered rest is given you know this rest that he talks about had had been hoped for from the beginning this was the hope that lamech had before the great flood when he had a son and named him noah and said he will comfort us in the labor and painful toil of our hands caused by the ground the lord has cursed this was a prophecy about the one to come who would offer us comfort and rest. And Jesus is that one. Jesus is the one that gives us rest and intermission from labor. For you see, we do not work for our salvation. Christ completed the work and he said it is finished. And now it is in his power and with his spirit in us, his life that lives in us, it is rest for our souls as it states in the gospel of john out of his which is christ out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given for the law was given through moses but grace and truth came through jesus jesus christ now we have this promise of rest a gift given by Christ, grace and truth. And we find this in his teachings. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. Christ is saying, take my teachings, my interpretation, and hold them fast. Hold them fast, just as the book of Proverbs calls to the son or daughter to obey their parents. When it says in Proverbs chapter 1, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head, and a chain 
to adorn your neck. And elsewhere in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, it says, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so Jesus says to us, Take my yoke upon you. Take my teachings. Hold fast to them. Accept my interpretation. And learn from me. And this is our task as Christians, as followers of Christ. To learn from him. To walk closely beside him. To walk closely with him. To follow his teachings and apply them. And put them into practice. And this is uh, our intentions here, my intentions of, of walking through the Gospels. Hopefully that's your intention as well. As we walk slowly through the Gospels to uh, learn from him, to grow closer to him, to follow his teachings, apply them, and to put them into practice, to learn from him. Take Christ's teachings and learn. Now, he is the one we should want to learn from for he is gentle and humble in heart it's not the overlord or the oppressive slave masters that we read about in the book of exodus those oppressive slave masters of egypt that forced harsh labor on the israelites no we learn from the one who is gentle and humble in heart and by doing so, by following him and his teachings, by doing this, we find the peace. We find serenity, refreshing rest we've been looking for. For Jesus says, you will find rest for your souls. And now this next verse is one I'd really like for us to look closely at. And that's Matthew chapter 11, verse number 30. Jesus says, for my yoke is teaching, is easy, and my burden is light. Dear friends, I don't believe Christianity to be easy. But it is eternally useful. I believe that word translated easy should be better defined. The Amplified Bible's translation does a better job of, of explaining. It says in that verse there, verse number 30, For my yoke, the teaching is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, hard, sharp, or pressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be borne. You know, we've often heard this verse, read this passage of scripture about uh, the burden, the labors, labors coming to uh, Jesus. We've often heard that verse, my yoke is easy. But the teachings of Jesus are not always easy. As we shall see here in the Gospel of Luke. If you have your Bibles tonight, if you will, open those up to the Gospel of Luke gospel of luke and i would like for us to read a few verses in luke luke chapter number six luke chapter number six beginning with verse number 27 luke chapter number six beginning with verse number 27 but you who are listening i say love your enemies do good to those who hate you Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, 
What credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. We see here that the teachings of Jesus is not always easy. For he teaches us to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us. There's nothing easy about that. The word translated as easy is the same word that Jesus used in the passage that we read there in verse number 35. Luke chapter number 6, thir verse 35, translated as kindness and used it to describe God's kindness. The Greek word is Christos. It means serviceable, good, useful, gentle, pleasant, kind. This word used, translated as easy to describe Christ's teaching, is also what we read there in verse number 35 as kind. So instead of easy, we can say that Christ's teachings are serviceable, good, useful, gentle, pleasant, and kind. They are suitable, usefully kind, eternally useful. In one scholar writes that we have no adjective in English that conveys this blend of being kind and good at the same time. And I find it striking how similar the word Christos is to Christ. And upon a, a further word study, we find this word Christostes. Christotes. It's similar to that word Christos. This word Christostes means in Greek goodness, uprightness, kindness, gentleness. It is useful and profitable, well fit for use for what is really needed. Think of that word yoke that Jesus used. My yoke, my teaching is well fit for use for what is really needed. Are our eyes open into our community, to those around us, to see what is really needed? Jesus' teachings, if we apply them and put them into use, applies to all those situations. It, it helps us in, in all situations. It's for what is really needed. It's kindness that is also serviceable. Christostes is useful kindness and refers to meeting real needs in God's way and in His timing and fashion. It's also listed as a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So you see, when I find it's not easy to practice Christ's teachings, I must rely on where that power comes from. It's through the Spirit. It is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And so with the believer, this divine kindness is the Spirit-produced goodness which meets the need and avoids human harshness and cruelty. And so, as you're watching, I pray that we can continue to follow Christ and observe his teachings, that we really come to understand who Christ is and what he is, is teaching us, and then apply that in all of life's situations. To have 
this useful kindness. You know, dear friends, it may not be easy, but it is eternally useful. I pray this message has been a blessing to you and that we'll have those opportunities. I pray and we'll pray uh, that together, that we have these opportunities before us, that doors will be open for opportunities and that we be able to bless others because God has blessed us so. Amen. Amen. Have a good rest of the week. Until next time, bye-bye.